Shalom, shalom. This is your brother Shamak out of the Great Millstone, Atlanta camp. Before I get started, I want to give all the glory, infinite praises unto Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Rachak Wadash, Yahweh being the Heavenly Father's true name, and His only begotten Son, true name being Yahweh Shai, both in the Hebrew language, whom the world incorrectly calls God and Jesus Christ. Also, want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Who teach and rule well, and who are the true leaders of the Hebrew Israelites within these last days. Also, want to give a shalom to the sincere brothers that's pushing the teachings truth worldwide, and shalom to all you sincere listeners and you sincere believers out there. Okay, <clears throat> here we're lesson, uh, as you see entitled, "The Lord left us to have zero excuses." Okay, just in this, it was true. This lesson was truly inspired in the midst of a uh, conversation with the brothers. You know, those that are in a like-minded spirit, you know, within the, within the body, within the ministry of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. So in this parable also uh, came to mind as well. So I thought to, you know, put it forth. So this is uh, Luke chapter 19. And I want to start. Okay, I started at verse 13. All right. This is Luke. No, I'll start verse 11. This is Luke chapter 19, verse 11. And it reads, and as they heard these things. He added and spake a parable because he was nigh to Jerusalem. All right. Near. Close. It says. And because they thought that the kingdom of God should immediately appear. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called him. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, occupy till I come. OK, this is the parable. All right. The he knows those that money. All right, it's basically, it's, basically, it's basically spiritual money, all right, doing spiritual work, okay? It says, verse 14, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we would not have this man to reign over us. And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading, Okay. Verse 16, then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound have gained 10 pounds. And he said unto him, well, thou good servant, because thou has been faithful in a very little, have a, have thou authority over 10 cities. Okay. Being able to manage little, the Lord can trust us, trust us with more. To whom much is given, much, uh, much is required. You know, as the scriptures say, verse 18 is in it reads in the second came saying, Lord, thou pound have gained five pounds. And this is also going to the measure, like spiritual measure. Everyone's, everyone's not given the same measure uh, through the spirit of the Lord. Everyone measures is different. You know, everyone's talents are different. The characteristics, the behaviors, personalities, it's all different, okay? But verse 19, it says, <clears throat> but we are to what? Be meat for the master's use and, still, and use what we what we do, what you know, what talents we do have, you know, for the benefit of uh, basically to increase and grow and abound in the ministry. All right. Verse 19. And he said likewise to him. Be thou also over five cities. Verse 20. And another came saying. Lord. Behold. Here is thy pound. Which I have kept. Laid up in a napkin. Here's the point. It says. For I fear thee. Because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down. And reapest that thou didst not sow. Verse 22. So basically this point. Verse 21. It's, it's really an excuse, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I, I hit it, you know, I hit the talent, okay? Because it was so, you know, saying things like, I mean, it was, you know, so, it was so precious, you know, and I knew you was a, a very serious and austere and strict man, you know, I just wanted to take, you know, I just wanted to take care of it. But truly, you're supposed to occupy till it comes, do, do the Lord's, do the Lord's bidding, you know what I'm saying? Let me grab that with Matthew chapter 5, all right, which always comes to mind. Matthew chapter 5, verse, um, Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, it reads, ye are the light of the world, all right? And who is the light? Yahweh Shai, all right? He comes in the volume of the book, the law, okay? Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. All right, yeah, we the light of the world, man. We we are anointed by the Lord through the through the Holy Spirit through that rakhak wadash. All right, 
of the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of these scriptures. And we are to profess and confess this truth before the world, before the heathen, before our own people, before everybody. All right? And we can't hide it under a bushel. We can't just sit back at home and just have all this knowledge, watch the videos, read, and just not teach, you know? Not edify, not build up others, you know? Not not commit to the each one teach one, you know? But verse 15, one more time, neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. Yeah, you logically thinking you don't light a candle and you trying to light the whole room up, you put it under the bed, you know, where it won't be able to light anything. It says, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. See, we, we are to profess and confess before the world in order to glorify our power. Because when those that go to the messages and they go to the prophets, go to the men of the Lord, what are we, we going to do? We're going to give honor and reverence to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. It's going to go in that exact order. Like, oh, how do you know, what name do we call on? How, who do we serve? All right, we're going to say Yahweh, the Heavenly Father's true name, and Yahweh Shai, his only begotten son's true name. That's our power. That's the God of Israel, all right? Exclusively, all right? That's the power for the Israelites, okay? Just that simple. So going back to Luke chapter 19, verse uh, 21, one more, time, one more time, to go over the point, it reads, For I fear thee, because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. See? To the Lord, like, man, you know, you, you, you know, he, he basically left no excuses for us, man. We know the Lord is a, is a terrible power, all right? Allah shot you, okay? It's a terrible, terrible-like power, all right? Strict, okay? We know how the Lord moves, man. We also understand he's very merciful as well. You know, we now we can't forget that, but the Lord is, is a man, his wrath, he's angry, he's angry with the wicked every day, you know? Every day. The Lord, the Lord has, he has, he's a righteous anger right now, okay? And we are to fear the Lord. We are to fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right? He says in verse 22, one more time, and he says to him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. And then when I came up, you know, when thinking upon this parable and when thinking upon these particular verses, it's like, damn, the Lord left us with zero excuses, we won't be able to say, oh, I, oh, you know, oh, you know, sound good excuses. We won't be able to say, oh, I was just so, I was just so nervous, you know. I just, you know, I just wanted to make sure people's around me was good. Just, just coming up with all types of, and we know, we know our people. Our people are good for finessing and winging things, man. You won't, we, hey, you won't be able to wing it to salvation. That's what's fearful. You won't be able to wing it. All right. You won't be able to last minute, you know, last minute clock in, nah, or lock in. No. It's, it's no excuses with the Lord, man. No excuses. To, you know, he, the Lord left no excuses to doubt, be slothful, all right? We go to go to the ant, thou sluggard, all right? You know, doubt if any man lack wisdom, acts, acts of the Lord. It's like he left he left no leeway to be to to be to basically, you know, fall short. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so let me also grab this scripture here. Uh basically another no excuse, you know, scripture. This is Luke uh so, so like, this is Sirach chapter 2 verse 10 It reads Look at the generations of old and see did, did ever any trust in the Lord And was confounded Or did any abide in his fear And was forsaken Or whom did he ever despise That, that called upon him So like he like Did I ever did these, did these things ever happen Within the accounts that we do read The accounts and the scriptures that we do come across All right Within the different plethora of books within the Holy Bible, all right, have they been forsaken? Is, is the Lord, the Lord, is the scriptures mention in Hebrew chapter six, the Lord is, is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love, all right, and those that did diligently seek Him, all right, you know, roughly paraphrasing. Okay, so it's like the Lord left us with like with no excuses, man. Within these lads, we want to be able to say, oh, I didn't, I didn't do it, I didn't, uh, I didn't do that because, you know, this or that. The Lord is gonna—he's gonna have this, these scriptures. This, the whole, the entire Bible is like a—it's like a—it's a, a two-edged sword. It's a two-edged sword, man. It cuts—it cuts the—it cuts the bullshit, bullshit up out of us, man. 
you know? Because we know, we know our people, we know ourselves, man. It, it's the, you know, we know the flesh, the spirit, the spirit, it, you know, be willing, but the flesh be weak. As it's mentioned in, uh, in the book of Matthew, all right. But I just um that these these particular verses came to mind. This particular uh, account concerning the the parable of the, of the talents, you know, came to mind as well. All right. But it basically just left that thought in my in my mind that it Lord really left us with zero excuses, man. We it won't be able to when the Lord returns, won't be like, oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't really know, man. I won't, oh, I didn't. I didn't really think we had to go out. We, I didn't think we had. To, it won't be any of those things, man. All right, is <laughs> the, the man, and we're and we're, the, and we're the Lord's mouthpiece. You know, we know it's not going to be any excuses when the Lord returns, man. And His return is very, very near. And how do we know? Due to the prophecies that are coming to pass. All right, that are happening, that are gradually setting up, like World War Three, like the implementation of the MOTB. All right, chariot sightings. All these different things, man. Sorrow, the beginning of sorrows, man. Okay, the beginning of the economic collapse. All right, these different signs of the end, okay? Especially the awakening of the Hebrew Israelites, which makes up you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who are scattered worldwide, all right? But I ended off there, and Lord willing, this lesson was edifying and also encouraging to you sincere believers. I want and I by giving all the glory, infinite praises unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakak Wadash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Repent, Yahweh Shai is coming back. All right, Shalom. Keep the faith. Shalom. Keep the faith.